All right, so Sophia is just under two years old. She's actually two months shy of two years. She's a female chocolate labradoodle that looks like a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Problems are jumping, licking, super friendly, but goes overboard. It did puppy training previously, knows the basics pretty well, fetch and leave it. But when she's excited or distracted, it can be another story. Barks at the gardener, will go potty in the garage. When it's raining, even though she's potty trained, they, they have four dogs total. But the biggest thing with this dog is crazy excitement, jumping. It's just an excited lab puppy. It's pretty much what we're dealing with. We're going to get her out. We're going to get her working on the prong. Then we'll go from there. So before we put anything on her, we're going to go ahead and get some before footage. Bring her out. Just going to walk along, see where she is. She's not too hard to manage on walks. She's mostly a crazy dog with the jumping, not listening. But dad lets her walk and sniff and do whatever while his wife wants the dog to walk properly. So this is how uh, they typically walk the dog and, and how Sophia just does whatever she wants. It's real hard to get her to come down from excitement and follow your lead when she's constantly taking the lead and en engaging with every piece of stimulation out there. And thing. Hey there, I'm CJ Quick and this is Intelligent Canine. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna take Sophia here and introduce her to the prongs. We're gonna start with a small prong. I do like to use a small for most dogs. If we need to make a smaller bigger, we can always add more links. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. And it seems to be a real good fit for her. We'll get the ear out. There we go. I'm actually going to take a link out. Oh, there we go with some of the jumping. I'm going to put the link back. So we got her. She's basically right in between the links. Don't you love it when that happens? Come here, Sophia. Hey. There we go. So we put it on. We're going to make sure it's at the top, just like we explained before all the way at the top and then we're going to rotate it and now the leash is going to clip to the swivel ring and the dead ring we're going to put our safety in place we have a carabiner here it's going to go there and the other end is going to clip right onto the flat collar right here there we go so let me get a shot of that real simple what we're going to do is we're going to begin to introduce the sensation to Sophia, basically we're going to start off with some light guidance. We're gonna help her learn what leash pressure is and what it's all about and how to follow it. So we're not necessarily gonna be doing leash pops or corrections. This is just leash guidance, active leadership, helping her learn how to follow the lead, give way to pressure, and we'll be able to create some communication between us and Sophia. And then as we're moving along, we'll be able to introduce a little bit more directional guidance, more and more as we go, and begin to add a little bit more pressure a little more pops as needed. At this stage, it's just an introduction to the communication. One of the great things about the prong collar is that we can create some clear communication from the beginning. The last thing we want to do is put the prong collar on and start cranking on the dog. That's totally not fair to the dog. We really want the dog to understand exactly what it means and what to do and use just enough pressure to help the dog learn. What we typically see is that when the prong collar is on a dog, that there's a few things that are causing it to be less effective. And that would be that it's too loose. Too many links, it's too big on the neck and it kind of hangs a little bit. We want a snug fit and high on the neck. Snug fit, high on the neck gives the best directional control. Now we use a remote collar on every dog. Yes, we use a remote collar, one of the best tools on the planet for training dogs. Uh, but a remote collar does not offer any directional guidance. So we like to start with a prong because it helps us teach the dog directional guidance and then we begin to overlay the remote collar after that and get some really nice remote collar skills into the dog. Now, you can teach a remote collar and never use a prong collar. We've been doing that for years. Prong collar helps out for better directional guidance, which makes the beginning days much simpler for the dog. The prong collar helps us create a much better connection between us and the dog early on. And it's easy for owners to jump in there and do it. The biggest thing here is not that we can walk the dog without pulling or we can walk the dog and the dog walks great with a loose leash. It's not that the dog can do it with us, it's more that the dog can do it with the owners. There's a different skill set required for the owners to be able to do it with the remote collar and we do teach that. But for the average dog owner, the prong collar is going to help them be able to lead their dog and get a loose leash walk in usually minutes compared to what we would be doing if we use other tools. So we've got the prong on Sophia. We're going to walk out. And all I'm going to do is start showing her a little bit of pressure. Encourage her to, good. Encourage her to come to me. I'm going to turn around. A little bit of pressure. Help her follow. Good. There we go. So notice how, how I'm holding the leash here. The pressure is literally very light. She follows it. Good. Good. 
and then we can begin to add encouragement. Sophia, come on, good job. A little pressure. Now right now, I'm a little light on the encouragement. Good, I want her to just focus on what the sensation is. Good job, good. So now that she's able to handle a little bit of guidance here, and I'm gonna start adding a little bit more of a pop. It's not really a pop. It's just a little bit more of a firmer guidance, but it's really light. It's not even really firm. So I'm gonna help her kind of come to me. There we go. Good. Good job. Go the other way. So now that she's handling this pretty well, so Sophia is actually quite fast. So now I'm gonna to start to help her tighten this up. It's gonna be less about her just giving way to leash guidance. I'm gonna to start to tighten it up and make it a little bit more precise. I want her to walk it more in this position here. A little bit of action to communicate with her. As we walk, just giving her a little bit of guidance here. I actually want her nose behind my hand here, midway down my leg. But I do want her to be able to be back enough to follow, right? If we give the dog an inch, they take the mile. They don't have reason and logic, so we're doing that for them. Just a little bit of guidance here. Good. The walk is really slow. This is more of a thinking game for the dog than it is physical going for a walk. It takes the dog a lot more mental energy thinking, figuring this out when we go slow. Feeling it out, right? Some dogs are really soft and all they need is a little bit of guidance and that's it. Other dogs are stronger, meaning they have a higher tolerance for pressure. So every dog has a different range. On a remote collar, it would be a, a narrow range or a wide range on the levels. On a prong collar, it would be a narrow range as far as gentle to firm or firm to really, really firm pressure. So now that I know that Sophia's pretty good with her with pressure, I can begin to help her a little bit more here with the prong and walking in the right position. Still have a happy dog, right? I want Sophia to be able to stand in one spot without trying to move anywhere. And so when we stop walking, I like to have the dog just be chill, just chill standing in one spot before we start introducing sit. Dogs in general are in a much calmer state of mind when they're following you. They're taking the lead and they're scanning and they're react, trying to react to all these different distractions. Then what happens is they stay in a heightened state of stimulation, a heightened level of excitement. And that level of excitement contributes to all the behaviors that we don't like. So Sophia's following the lead and it's gonna open her up to being a little bit more calm and focused so that we can begin to teach her the sit command, the place command, the come command, or teach her whatever, anything that you want to teach your dog. After a few minutes, introducing the prong, we're already having a nice walk. She's in a good spot. She's receptive to the communication. If she was not receptive to the communication, then I'm gonna start doing more 180s and other walking maneuvers to help the dog learn to follow. All right, so we have some distraction. We have a car that just pulled in. And Sophia wants to get, get a little excited to so see some of this excitement here. So now when the dog starts getting excited, that's where people really want to start cranking on the dog. We don't do that here. We're going to slow it down more. You want to be fair to the dog. You want to teach the dog what to do and what things mean before you just go and be too firm on the dog. Good. Very good. Okay. Let's step back in the shade, we'll wrap this up. All right, so Sophia did really good. Sophia did really well with the first intro to the prong, really excited about it. The next steps here with Sophia would be to go for longer walks and begin to help her around a little bit more distraction, gradual, small distraction. Help her learn how to walk a little more centered in her lane next to us. Here later today, we're gonna to be introducing the remote collar to her as well. Very low levels, teach her what the sensation means and how to start to follow. And we start using those lower levels of the collar sensation uh, for Sophia to begin to learn to follow us more and more consistently as she's going through the training process. Well, that's it for the prong collar video today. My name is CJ Quick. This is Intelligent Canine. It's Natasha on the camera. Thanks for videoing today, Natasha. And we'll see you next time.